Hey guys, I'm Buck Weezer. Welcome to another video with Buck's Small Engine DIY on YouTube. We are putting the do and the do it yourself. This weekend, I picked up a Billy Goat leaf blower. Picked it up uh, for 40 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. I worked on one of these <coughs> a couple of years ago, and ever since then, I've been wanting to get my hands on one for myself. Let's give it a closer look and then see if we can get it running. Well, <clears throat> these are pretty cool. And uh, these will huff and puff and blow your house down. They'll make the big bad wolf look, look like he's got a case of asthma. It's got an eight horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. Now this are from 1985, based on the first two digits of the date code. So it's not, it's nothing new. It's been around a while, what, 38 years? But eight horsepower, that was back when horsepower meant something. So yeah, it's a pretty significant machine. I, uh, that label back here does not look legible. I have to take a closer look. Uh, so anyway, it's got the solid rubber tires, so I don't have to worry about a flat. Um, <clears throat> it appears that the handle had broken at one point, and it's not a pretty repair, but I'll bet it's pretty solid now. But all in all, it looks like it's in good condition. The owner, previous owner, had said it had a cracked fuel tank, so we'll have to see about that. And... Uh, these things feature a, a, a side or front discharge, so you can send it out the front or you can shoot it out the side, which is how I see them used mostly. So <clears throat> I've got an acre and a half, and the, the chore that I dislike the most is autumn leaf cleanup. So here it is, uh, uh, March, and I still got leaves all over the place because I just I just never liked that. But this thing will make quick work of it. We got our throttle control here. I observed that it's not locked up. So engine spins. We'll have to check and make sure it's got some oil in it. And uh, we'll see if we'll we'll start by seeing if it got spark and then uh, if it does, then maybe we'll shoot some starting fluid directly into the carburetor and see if it'll fire on that real quickly. And we'll just uh, take it one step at a time as we do with all of these projects. All right, so brought it out of the sun so we can see the spark tester a little more clearly. And I'm just gonna pull the starter open and see if we get a, a light flashing in there. I think we did we do yeah I see it flashing in there now we can just see if it'll it'll fire up briefly on starter starting fluid I put in a new spark plug I also observed that some of the head bolts were a little loose particularly this one here has the kill switch as part of it so I tighten them a little bit I removed the air filter which is needs to be replaced and I think what I just want to do is uh, just put some um, starting fluid down here and uh, see if it'll fire up on that. Try that. is very encouraging so it does have compression it will run uh, it's getting spark yeah so I was looking at the uh, guy said the fuel tank was leaking and it looks like the fuel line was replaced and maybe you can see down here it's it's cracked here where the uh, this looks like a replaced fuel valve 
we could try to put a little in there but you know what it sat for such a long time I, I'm gonna take I think I'm just gonna go ahead and take down that carburetor give it a once-over clean it out uh, these are pretty simple and uh, this particular style has the one two three screws I think I've got the gasket that goes here and I think it's probably worth just taking apart giving it a cleaning or something like that and uh, and and then we'll put it back up and also see make sure it doesn't leak fuel but I'm feeling pretty good so far all right so let's go ahead and see about getting this off I'm gonna move the fuel line out of the way That's on there good. Okay, here we go. We'll see. 1985. So that should be electronic ignition by 85, I would think. Right? No points in condenser. I don't think so. comes off now all the way and carburetor comes off throttle linkage there and that's it so he's off this gasket busted maybe I have another one of these we'll see all right that's all we need to do here we can take it to the workbench and open it up and take a look inside all right well carburetor cleaning is by by no means the interesting part of small engine repair but it's necessary so we take out this main jet here at the bottom and now we've got to and you might not be able to see it get in there with a screwdriver for the tube that goes up through the okay good sometimes they're just frozen stuck in there from you know fuel that is turned to varnish in there but this one came loose very easily and you got to do this first before you take the top and the bottom apart because otherwise it won't come apart so there he is uh, so now let's do one two three across the top They weren't tight at all. See if she comes apart. All right, there you go. So the bowl doesn't look terrible. All right, so I'm just going to take, uh, I'm going to clean off some of this mess with carb spray. After we do that, I'm going to fill the the ultrasonic cleaner with some hot water and purple power uh, detergent that's what I like to use and we'll give it a few whirls through there and I'll look around in my parts box see if I have some the gaskets we need um, but 
it's it's a it's a pretty simple uh, carburetor. Oh, this is the low speed jet. Also can come out, and that's just a needle. Don't want to lose that. So I'll just clean off some of this big gunk, uh, and we'll throw it through the ultrasonic. All right, here's our carburetor all cleaned and ready to be reassembled. So I wanted to show you that real quick. This tube here, this is this is the main jet, and this one's really important to clean out. I got to put on some pretty strong magnifiers to see this. But in addition to this, you know, having clean all the way through, you've got four small holes up here that have to be clean and clear. And harder to see are one two right here they are just tiny tiny little holes so you got to make sure that's all clean and clear but the first thing we're going to do is get this new gasket sit, set that in place I like that exactly try it this way it feels better all right good now we take the float I got the needle right there and our float pin go through there I don't have my fingers are too fat there we go alright good and he sits nice and level so that's good alright so now we got the float on needle and seat good we can put the two pieces together am I doing it right yeah I think I'm doing it right just like that you got one two three screws that hold that in place one two and we can tighten them down with a screwdriver or a nut driver I'm very excited to get this uh, put back together and get it up on the machine I think it's going to run good based on what we've seen so far right I was actually thinking that this carburetor probably didn't even need to be taken apart or cleaned out we could probably have just added some fuel and tried to fire it up problem was that leaking gas tank so I didn't want to I didn't want to I didn't want to pour gas into it knowing that it was going to leak all over so eh, let's just go ahead and do this all right so next we can put in this emulsion tube going right in there, our jet. Okay, this screwdriver will work better. Take that in as far as it'll go. Snug it down without over tightening it. And then we can put this guy in. I think I'll do that with the pin removed. Got a gasket right there. All right. Let's see. Need to put a wrench on that just a little bit. Seven sixteen. So just, just like give that a little bit of a tightening. All right, so again, this this needle will go in, and I'm going to put it in until it stops, and not beyond that, because you don't want to ruin the tip. All right, just to there, half, hole, and half again.
one and a half turns. We can adjust that later if we need it. Here's the low speed screws in right here. And what you want to do with this, I think what I'm going to do is, of course this is adjustable after the carburetor is up and the engine's running, but I'm just going to take it all the way down until it stops. Don't torque it down, don't crank it down, just take it until it stops right there. I'm going to back off half a turn, full turn. So I'm going to leave it there at a full open, one full revolution. So this carburetor is good to go, ready to be installed. Well, I got our new tank in the mail. Looks like someone uh, painted it or maybe spray painted it at some point. I don't know. I don't care. As long as it doesn't leak. So we just hooked this up. It's our last step. That's our last step, and then we'll be able to uh, fire this guy up. Okay. around pretty good so I could just make my way right on out to the curb and uh, I'm happy real happy it wasn't it wasn't much work to get this going basic maintenance I put spark plug change the oil uh, air filter 
we, we replaced the gas tank. So all in all, I probably have, I spent 40, maybe another 40 for the parts, 80 bucks. It runs pretty good. Yeah, real happy with that. All right, that, that feels good. I guess I'll fire it up and do some more work. Thanks for watching the video. Your comments and questions are always appreciated in the discussion below. I look forward to seeing you all on our next video and have fun with your uh, Billy Goat leaf blower. See you later.